talking about um, yesterday's Molokai solo crossing. Um, got my 14 year old boy. He made it. It was brutal conditions. Yeah, I can't say I was surprised when I heard that Alex did the channel at 14 years old. My husband and I have the good fortune of living on the marina, and we had a two man, and I told Les, hey, we should get Alex out here on the water and putts around the marina and see how he likes it. Really good support system, and it's not just me. You know, he's got his Auntie Maggie, Rick Smith, who basically took him in the one, one man canoe and has been grooming him. He's got his Auntie Denise Darvell Chang, who makes sure he trains at least once a week and goes to six man practice. She's the one that introduced him to six man paddling. Les Look, who makes my paddles, um, approached me about having his son Alex um, come out and try paddling to see if it was something that would uh, fit his um, lifestyle. And so we came down here on a Sunday, just a few of us, and we put Alex in the canoe, and that's how the story begins. Three other juniors that did it, and so we're kind of hoping here in Hawaii that that'll be a trend. We're trying to expose um, the youth to, you know, outdoor canoe paddling, one-man paddling, not only to progress the sport here in Hawaii, so. You know, we can compete against the Tahitians, but also it's something positive for them to do. Amazing and also a good sign for our sport that not only was there one junior, Alex, who is 14, but there's a few that also means that more kids are, are taking it up and, you know, up for the challenge instead of just doing short course races, coastal, around the island, but um, actually going out there and doing the channel. I heard about it from my friends. I think it's pretty cool because he only did it when he was 14. It's kind of young. And he did it all by himself. But we were there cheering him on. Yeah, Alex's look is, you know, just that is so awesome, the up and coming generation of our sport, and it's so good to see the young kids coming into it so strong. I'm very impressed, but I can't say I'm really surprised that family has paddling in their genetics. Yesterday was the 2011 Kaivi solo for one man, and um, it wasn't the greatest of all conditions, but it could have been worse, you know, could be worse. Hi, my name's Alex Look. I'm 14 years old. I'm in eighth grade. I crossed the Molokai Channel on a one man solo. Five hours and I think 30 minutes. I didn't really train that much. Like I trained like maybe once or twice a week when I should have been training like three or four times. But I gave him grief because he fished the whole day, but the day before. yeah, the day before he did a full day in the sun. But he had a big smile on his face. Four mahis puts a big smile on anyone's face.
know, we still had a little bit of a bump, but yet, you know, it was pretty calm water. So the bump took, you know, effort to chase and there wasn't too much reward beyond that effort. And, you know, it was, all in all, it was a hard race, no matter who you are, you know. Alex, being the youngest at 14, my son 15 and my oldest son 18, they all did the channel. So we had three youth paddlers from Huinalu Canoe Club paddling the solo. Unfortunately, the conditions were flat, no wind, and that wasn't what Alex is best at. Alex is a, you know, a real good surfer out in the ocean. So the bigger, the better for Alex. Completing the Molokai in itself on a one-man canoe was admirable for all three of them. And uh, for Alex, not giving up, not having the conditions that he paddles best in says a lot about you know, his uh, character and resilience. Because a lot of older um, adult paddlers just hung it up and quit. But to see this 14-year-old, 15-year-old persevere, you know, a flat channel and whatnot, says a lot about, you know, what we're doing here with the kids at Huinalu and the upbringing at home and stuff. He would ask us questions about, you know, when to eat, how to eat, what to eat. You know, we told him not to try anything new or just eat what you normally eat. Don't wait to get thirsty, don't wait to get hungry. It's a big challenge and a lot of people, you know, it's, your first one is, a, is the most intimidating because you don't know what to expect. And so the fact that he got it out of the way, I expect really good things out of him. So very excited for Alex. And it's something, you know, you can do with your kid. You know, I, I think it's a win-win situation and, you know, I can't think of anything better than spending time with my kid. Getting real close, Alex. You're getting really close. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And watching them, you know, achieve their goals. Sometimes it's a little painful to, to watch them suffer when, when they're going through a really hard race. But I guess that's part of growing up and part of the whole process. And, you know, like I told you yesterday, my 14-year-old boy, he left Molokai 14 years old, but he arrived a young man for what he went through. Pretty amazing. Working in the shop here, I, uh, you know, I get to hear all the stories. Everybody comes in and tells about their paddling exploits. It's going to be hard to top that 14-year-old story, you know. It's a good one to have in your back pocket when you get older, <laughs> you know. Good friend Mike, we've known each other since high school, and that's a long time ago, longer than we cared to admit. But he um, was nice enough to come and help us with Alex's little endeavor to try and cross the Kaivi Channel solo on a one-man canoe and we couldn't have done it without him and you know that goes pretty much back to, to Alex's support system and all the people that are behind him and helping him to try and accomplish his goals not only for himself but for the rest of the Keiki in Hawaii to follow. Uh, it was an honor to uh, to participate in this, you know, to watch Alex go across the channel. I mean, you know, it just shows a lot of character on him for to paddle in that kind of conditions is, uh, I would have never done it, you know. I would have left a canoe on the, on the racks and, and uh, said, let's go fishing. <laughs> Basically, I was But I mean, for, for him to, you know, when he did bog down, to, to keep going for a 14 year old just shows his, his character, what a strong minded kid he really is, you know. I mean, hoo ha. I mean, mean. 
It's really me. So, you know, it's a big family endeavor. Um, I, I can't, you know, wait to see what happens next. You know, maybe he's going to have the interest of building koa canoes. Maybe he's going to want to build paddles. But I think, I think what's going to happen, though, is you got a seed planted, you know, and, and something that can grow in the future, you know. Um, and then paddling needs that. You need these young, the younger kids to keep the interest alive, you know, because it's a lot more than um, just racing and getting trophies and competing, you know. We, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of families, you know, involved, and uh, there is a culture, you know, around paddling, and the Hawaiian culture is, is represented by that. So this is really a special, you know, special thing to have. Winning's great. It is definitely great. It's like icing on the cake, but you know, to me, winning's not everything. You also got to go out there and have just a good time with it. You know, ocean is is it is a playground for a lot of people in the tropic, the tropical area. You know, Hawaii down down south. And um, you know if the if the ocean starts falling apart on us because we're abusing it, it's not going to be such a playground anymore. And, you know, and, and you're going to really hinder um, you know future generations from from doing things that we've been doing, you know, and, and generations before us. Outriggered since I was 12 years old for Lanikai Canoe Club. Right now, I'm currently training for the 2012 Olympics in uh, sprint kayaking. So I'm currently not doing much outrigger, but uh, waiting to get back into it.